So today I'm talking about a P0126 code, what it is and how you can go about fixing it. And so what is a P0126 code? Well, it's an insufficient coolant temperature for stable operation. And so what does this mean? Well, basically the engine needs to reach a set temperature before everything can go into what's called a closed loop, which is basically where the computer's using the O2 sensors to adjust the air fuel ratio mixture that's going into the cylinders. There's what's called oxygen sensors or O2 sensors located down the exhaust and they're just reporting back to the computer how much oxygen was burnt off during combustion and based on that information the computer is going to adjust the air fuel ratio mixture that's going into the cylinders which is going to help fine-tune the engine and this whole cycle of the o2 sensor reporting to the computer how much oxygen was burnt off and the computer adjusting the air fuel ratio mixture is what's called a closed loop but if the engine doesn't warm up to a set temperature Basically, it's not going to be able to fine-tune the engine. And if the engine is still running, which is very common that the engine is still running, it still starts up and drives, because the computer is going to be using other sensors to try to keep the engine running, but it's going to be running in what's called an open loop. And so when you get this P0126 code, the computer is not going to be able to fine-tune the engine like it wants to, and so it's going to, have to be troubleshooted to know why. And so what are some possible causes of a P0126 code? Well, the first thing to do is go check your engine coolant level. Be sure it's good, that it's not low or anything like that. Because if the engine coolant is low, then these sensors could get bad readings and things like that. Be sure the engine's cool and that it's not hot when you go to check it. But the first thing to do is go check your coolant level and be sure that's good. The next thing that could cause this is a bad engine coolant temperature sensor. And basically this engine coolant temperature sensor is what's reporting back to the computer what the temperature of the engine is. And if the engine coolant temperature sensor goes bad, then it might just be giving bad information back to the computer. So the computer just thinks there's a problem when there isn't. There's some different ways to go about testing these engine coolant temperature sensors. If you have a scan tool that has live data or data stream, you can't go and check what that engine coolant temperature sensor is reporting that the temperature is and be sure this is correct. For example, if the engine's cold and you go to check it and it's reading like this, like 129 degrees Fahrenheit or some really low number or something like that, then you know that it's having some kind of problem, that there's some kind of issue going on with that engine coolant temperature sensor. You can also use a multimeter to go and check these sensors using ohms to check it for resistance. And basically to do this, you look up what the rated specifications are for that particular engine coolant temperature sensor. Since there can be differences between them, you check to see what the temperature is and then you see if it matches that. So for example, here's a 2012 Toyota Corolla engine coolant temperature sensor specifications. If the temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit, then you should be reading around two to 3,000 ohms. And if you're not, if it's higher than that or lower than that, then you know it's bad and you know it needs to be replaced. You can also check the wiring going to that engine coolant temperature sensor. It's always a good idea to get a wiring diagram for the specific vehicle. That way you know for sure what's going on with it. But it is very common for five volts to be going to these sensors. And then you're going to have a signal wire going back to the computer. So you can't go and check and be sure that you're getting voltage and that that signal wire going back to the computer is good. Another thing to keep in mind with these engine coolant temperature sensors is that sometimes there could be more than one. Sometimes there could be two or even three. It's really going to vary. It's going to depend on the vehicle, the year, the make, different things like this. So if you do go to test that engine coolant temperature sensor, it's going to be a good idea to get a diagram for what's going on with that particular vehicle. But just keep in mind that sometimes there can be more than one engine coolant temperature sensor. And the next thing that could cause this is bad engine thermostat. And basically the thermostat is a mechanical device that stays closed when the engine's cold and it blocks the flow of coolant until the engine starts to warm up. And then once the engine does warm up, this thermostat's going to slowly open up and it's going to let coolant go past it, which can start to circulate in the engine and through the radiator and keep the whole engine cool. And so this thermostat is a very important component that helps maintain the engine temperature. And if it goes bad and it gets stuck shut, then the engine overheat. Or if it gets stuck open, then the engine can run too cool, which can also cause problems. There's some different ways to go about testing to see if that engine thermostat has gone bad. There's some good videos on that. I've made videos on that. I'll put a link down in the description box below if you want to check that out. But the next thing that could cause this is a bad thermostat. And the next thing on the list is going to be that there's some kind of problem going on in the cooling system. And this is going to be something like a bad pump or possibly like a blocked passage where the coolant can't flow properly through the whole engine. Although that is less common, when these water pumps go bad, they have what's called a weep hole down on the bottom of them where basically they'll drip coolant out to indicate that it's gone bad and that it's having a problem. So if you do have a coolant leak and you look around that water pump and you see it leaking out the bottom, then you know that water pump's having a problem, you know it needs to be replaced. But the next thing that could cause is that there is some kind of other problem going on with the cooling system. And the last thing on the list is going to be that the engine's having some kind of mechanical problem. And this would be something like a bad head gasket or possibly a bearing that's gone bad, like a rear main bearing or something like that. 
this isn't going to be too common. And usually if that happens, you'll know it because you'll be getting other symptoms. You'll begin a lot of other codes and things like that. But just keep in mind that it is possible that there's some kind of mechanical problem. But the last thing on the list is going to be that the engine's having some kind of mechanical problem. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P0126 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me. I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.